Okay, Etheridge again, part two of the lithograph gear acquisition video. As you saw in the previous one, I crafted one of the items, the bracelet. Now I need to do the, the necklace, I believe, or the opposite. But I need to have the lithographs. And uh, one of the ways of getting those is through contracts. You go to the contract NPC and you'll see the contracts that they're offering and the rewards. What I'm looking for here is lithographs as rewards. But I don't see any at this particular vendor. So what I'm going to do is fast travel to another city uh, which uh, has vendors. There's actually three of these contract NPCs, I believe. Uh, and then you're looking for, in this case, the uncommon lithograph for accessories specifically. Now, this particular guy has uh, the rare the rare ones. I can refresh it and it's still going to be rare. So this is not going to be useful. Uh, I need to go to a lower tier uh, zone to get the lower tier NPC. So this is not the right location, but let me just show you what this uh, this location looks like. This is actually the uh, castle stronghold that if you complete all the requirements, you can actually own as a guild, uh, which is pretty cool. There is uh, a series of events that you need to complete, like a progression through a period of perhaps six or seven weeks. Um, and by accumulating different points, you can get up in the guild ranking, and that is how you are able to unlock the ability to own the stronghold. Okay, so let's see if she's got what I need. All right, here we go. So she does have some lithographs, but not the kind I need, so I'm going to refresh it. Okay, so there's one. So we're going to take that contract. There's another one. That's two. I need four in total, so I'm going to refresh and hope to get more. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to have to take one that I don't need. You can not refresh until you take at least one. So I have two, and I need two more. See, two accessories. Good. All right. So sometimes when you're doing this, you want to try and dovetail your your uh, your task. So if you're if you're tasked with attacking a particular mob and you have another contract which requires you to collect things that, that mob drops, then it's a good idea to take those together, right? It'll be more efficient. That's why I'm looking at the details. Uh, in some cases, you'll have to go to more than one zone. These NPCs cover between three and four different zones, which are different mob types, different tasks, and so on. So that's what I'm looking at now. I'm going to have to visit two zones. There's no real way around it. Uh, to be more efficient, uh, I will try to find some that match at least. All right, so I need to pick a third one that's not going to give me what I need. Uh, when doing this, you can either go for a lithograph that gives you an item that you can craft and maybe use in the book or maybe get a good trait that you can sell or you can go for a skill book. It really depends on where you are and your progression. Okay, armor, weapons, no good. No good. Okay, so I need to take... This is gonna it's gonna require me to do more than one. Hmm. I'm not sure where to go with this. Because I only have two more slots. I'm not gonna be able to do this in one go. Hmm. See, I can use the growth stones, the green growth stones, and combine them to make higher tier ones. I can use the green skill books and dissolve them, or I can just go for mats. I am going to need the mats anyway. All right, weapons, weapons. Uh, this is bad. I don't have uh, the necessary lithographs even available. I'm going to have to reroll again. Okay, so one thing I can do, I could abandon the, uh, the existing contracts. I didn't think about that. You can just do that over and over to get them, but uh, yeah, so you can see I have two zones worth, five in total. So I'm going to show this process in real time, just to, to give you an idea of how long it actually takes. 
Took about seven minutes to craft the first blue gear piece. And then we'll see how long it takes to craft the second one. Now you notice it's raining. One thing that Throne of Liberty does is uh, the rain will apply the wet condition to both yourself and to the enemy players or the mobs. And this condition has multiple effects. So for some of your powers, it will increase your damage. For others, it will decrease it. And it'll, it'll apply even effects on mobs. So for example, lightning powers can chain when the targets are wet. Um, there's all kinds of neat stuff in there. Uh, there's also wind, so you have weather in the form of being wet, which can also be applied in water. Um, and then wind, which will increase the range on flight, and there are some effects on certain bow powers. Okay, so because I'm farming green mobs, and I'm a high level, uh, this, this doesn't take very long. A lot of these are one or two shot. So the, the completion of the uh, actual contract won't be difficult. Now the other thing is the lithograph book and the contracts are source one source of gear, the recipes, but you can also get them from mobs. And there's kind of like a browser in game which allows you to see what things drop off of what mobs. And that's another way to get them. So while I'm doing this, there's a chance I will get drops that I need as well. Either the items themselves, the green the green gear pieces, or also the individual um, lithographs. So it's not just a question of getting them from the quest com or the contract completion. I can get them passively just by fighting the mobs in the zone. So that's a possibility. All right, always good to grab resource nodes when you find them. You, you do need those in quantities. You can also use those resources as your guild donation, which will get you the guild currency, which can be used to buy other things. Uh, you, you don't want to spend too much time on this, but if they're in your, in your route, go ahead and pick them up. One thing I noticed recently, which is a good tip, is there is an ability to apply the eclipse state to a region. So these, these, the map is divided up into regions, and you can, you can do that. And what it does is it puts certain mobs to sleep, which means there's certain mobs which would normally be aggressive. So as you're running through and gathering, they would attack you. But when that condition is applied, they will be asleep, which means you can run around the entire zone and harvest freely without having to worry about aggro. So that's actually a great time saver. So anytime your your zone's in an eclipse, um, maybe check to see the mob status, and if it's the case, then take advantage of that. All right, so I've completed one of the contracts, and I just need to finish the other one in this region before I move on to the next one. You notice the, the different um, contract objectives are marked on the map. The, the mobs themselves also have a symbol above them. The symbols are color-coded to represent whether they're, they're contract items, the side quest items, the main storyline items, uh, or the guild contract items. It's, it's a pretty simple but clear system. Uh, there's also kind of a... It's not, it's, it's not an elite. I'm not sure what this is categorized as, but you'll notice that there are higher tier bosses, or mobs rather, and it's always good to kill those. Those have a loot table, which is somewhat better than the regular mobs. So that's, that's a good drop. All right, let's get this contract finished. The world is really nice, um, the lighting effects. I wouldn't call them realistic necessarily, but they are, they're not quite like New World style realistic, but they're pretty, they're pretty good. They, they've done a good, a good job of balancing it between realism and, uh, you know, kind of an artistic style. Oh yeah, I needed to harvest for this completion. So these nodes, they are, not instant, so other players can can do them as well. 
A little dirty here. I took this away from him. Or I was going to. I remember now, yeah. I was going to take it, but I had already completed it, so I just stopped and let him have it. No, no need to be a dick. He, he could be trying to get these for a completion as well, and it would suck if I took that from him. All right. So now we have the, the ones I needed from this area. And I need to go to the other area. The map also will, you know, illustrate the general general region in which your request or, or contract completed items are in. We could see that with that with that circle. And of course the mobs have the icon above their heads. Pretty quick kills here. You know, different weapons um, do this at different speeds. Okay, well, I'm competing for mobs. Let me, let me just move a little bit. They recently changed uh, how the system determines who gets ownership of the loot based on how much damage is done. It's actually a random roll, believe it or not. So if both of us tag a mob, it doesn't matter how much damage we did, it's a 50-50 chance. So it, it can happen, and it has happened to me, where you do like 95% of the damage to a mob, some guy comes along and tags it, and he's the one who gets credit. That's annoying as hell in events where getting the drops from the mobs is important for the dynamic open world events. Because you're collecting something that you turn in for credit and ranking and determines your rewards. Uh, so that's a big problem. Conversely, it, it does allow you to compete against the, the bots, which I think might be why they did that. So what bots do is they run around, they'll gather up a whole bunch of mobs. Um, you can just tag them with an AoE or something and perhaps steal the credit. So I don't know if they're going to keep that. They, The game is in release, uh, technically, in Korea. But they are doing a lot of changes. In fact, there are some major changes coming up to how some of the stats work. So currently, for example, you have magic, magic hit, melee hit, and ranged hit. Which means that when you're building your gear set, if you are using a melee weapon for one of your weapons and a ranged weapon for your other, or a magic ranged and a and just a, a damage range like bow or crossbow, and you're dynamically swapping, but you're not dynamically swapping your gear set. So depending on what power you're using on your bar, you'll be getting the benefit from the stat on your gear for a certain power and then not for the other, which is terrible, right? It's, it causes you to make um, some some decisions which are, are not really necessary. So what they're doing is they're combining the hit damage stats. So there will no longer be melee hit, magic hit, and ranged hit. It will be just hit. So that's gonna, that's gonna be a, a good change. Um, it simplifies things. That I, I do like the approach and you see this throughout the game. Yes, you could get some kind of gameplay and some, you know, complexity out of having things be more complicated, but they, they're they generally making things somewhat simple. Um, the systems are not particularly deep, but, but it is wide. There are a lot of different systems and ways of contributing. You know, when you're talking about theory crafting, you have your attributes, of course, you have the different weapon powers, so the skills, then you have the passives for the weapons, and you have the ability to have multiple weapons. You also have the masteries for the individual weapons. And then, of course, your gear, which has the attributes, or rather the modifiers, so like things like extra regen or additional health or mana. Then you have the traits, and you have multiple traits, and you can level up the traits. It's actually a lot. Then, of course, you have the consumables. You have the guardians, which are kind of like uber powers, maybe ultimates, I guess you'd call them. There's a lot going on, but the individual things are simple, which which makes the, the experience of figuring out what to do and adjusting much easier. So I do appreciate that approach. Not everything needs to be complicated or require a spreadsheet, right? Okay, so I've completed uh, one of the contracts. I got two or three left, I believe. No, two left. The, the weapons, you know, they they give you the ability to have alts, right? But you don't necessarily need to do that. Because you can weapon swap, you can pretty much 
access all the weapons, but your gear won't be suited uh, for all of those. So alts can be can be used to bypass that. So you're wearing like armor, accessories, etc. that match the weapon that you're using, and you would do it that way. The other thing that alts do is some of the benefits are per character. So for example, you're limited to doing a certain number of dungeons um, per day with um, with a character. But you can you can have an alt and and then get an additional set of dungeon runs. But the currency you sell the items for, so if you get a good drop in a dungeon and it's not useful for that character or it's just valuable and you want to sell it, if you do sell it on the marketplace, the currency you get for that can be shared to your primary character. So that's actually a good a good feature and a, one reason to do, do alts. It doesn't take that long to get to 50, which is the current cap. Leveling gear takes a lot longer, you know, getting to the final form of your character, leveling up all the powers. But the individual character to 50 isn't too bad, so you can unlock the ability to access all of the content much sooner. And um, and then not have to wait until your character is fully, you know, best in slot, etc. Fully upgraded. Alright. Two down, one to go. So, again, just keep in mind what we're doing here. We are doing this lower level content so as to unlock the uh, items recipe in the lithograph book which means I am farming green stuff to get blue stuff, which is much easier. You could farm mobs in a, in a higher level zone and get the blue drops directly, but there's a lot of RNG involved and it you know, arguably can take more time. So that's what I'm doing. So again, the goal was to get four accessory lithographs and I believe, yes, I earned additional currency. So I earned enough to buy the, the two that I was missing. So that's another benefit of doing it this way. Okay, so now I have the four. And I'm going to run over to the accessories in PC and craft the remaining four pieces. And I'll be able to fill out that line in the book and get my last uh, slot blue and then I'll have a full set of blue gear. Of course, I have the uh, the four lithographs or for the the recipes, but I do need to craft the items, which means see that's the last one. So I do need the uh, the materials. Let me just make sure that I didn't pick up any Okay, no. So I didn't get any drops. Sometimes when you're out farming, you will actually get just passively the, the drops that you need and then you don't have to craft them and you can save it which is good that didn't happen all right so let's craft the final four items i have all the the needed materials i just need to unpack them they're in those chests in my inventory you will get a lot of those materials if you're active uh, you'll get them and you'll continue to get them way way beyond your um need for them directly you will no longer need them to craft green gear unless you're doing something like this same thing for the skill pages you will no longer need to upgrade uh, uncommon or green level skills so then you can combine those you can dissolve them break them down for materials and combine those materials uh, okay so this is a problem right away i got a great success let me see what the attribute is uh, okay that's not so bad Sometimes this means the item is now sellable on the market, which depending upon, you know, what it was, um, so you go to the market and I go to the interface, you'll see that the item is actually listed as being available to be sold, which is not the case normally. It's not particularly high value, uh, so I'm not going to bother trying. And plus I need it, right? So I'm just going to continue. But if, if you got something really good that had a particularly good trait, uh, then you might consider, uh, okay, I got another one. Let's check this one out. Okay, that's a, that's a problem. So that's actually a good, a good trait. Skill damage, whether it's a boost or the reduction, is, is really good. So I'm going to want to keep this 
and uh, and not use it for the book, which means I'm going to need another lithograph recipe to okay, so, so. to craft a fourth item. But I'll I'll not make you guys suffer through that. We'll just show you what happens here. So I'll craft the remaining two. I just need two more, and that will allow me to complete the book and get the get the last item. When you get these good results, you can the choice is use them or sell them, right? You can extract the trait and use it on one of your own items, or you can sell it on the market. Now, it is there are some mechanics there. It has to be the duplicate, but we're not going to worry about that for now. But this would be what you would do. You would extract it as an essence, and then that could be used for uh, other items to level up that That's specific okay. trait. All right. Let's see, I got my four items, and that's how you get your rare, your rare completion. Thanks, guys. Enjoying the game. I hope you guys are playing. See you in the next one.